Oxford, the city of dreaming spires, set in the heart of England and home to the world-renowned University of Oxford. It's the oldest university in the English-speaking world, dating back to the 11th and 12th centuries. The first colleges, University College, Merton and Balliol, were established in the 13th century, and by the 14th century, Oxford was respected as the world's foremost centre of learning. Oxford has not only been a centre of great academic excellence over the centuries, it's also been the focus for huge debates and controversies, often of a theological and religious nature. In the 14th century, the master of Balliol College, John Wycliffe, wanted to translate the Bible into the common vernacular, very much against the wishes of the Pope at the time. During the reign of Mary, Queen of Scots in the 16th century, the then bishops of Canterbury, London and Worcester were martyred for their support of the Protestant Reformed faith. Cranmer, Latimer, Ridley were martyred, burnt at the stake right here in Broad Street. Just round the corner is the Eagle and Child, the favoured watering hole of possibly the 20th century's most famous Christian apologist, C.S. Lewis. He and fellow Oxford writers, including J.R.R. Tolkien, became known as the Inklings, and they met here every week to discuss their writings and ideas. They were the first to receive proof manuscripts of Lewis's The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, in June 1950. From 1942 to 1954, Lewis also was president of the Oxford Socratic Club. There, each Monday evening of the term time, he would defend the Christian faith in the midst of those challenges presented by agnostics and atheists. Recently, those with a more atheistic agenda, quite overt, people like the chemist Professor Peter Atkins, the Darwinian biologist Professor Richard Dawkins, have been very successful and vigorous in their campaign to support the creed of atheism. Equally, there are many other leading academics here in Oxford who do believe in God. People who have argued persuasively and passionately for God's existence and the truth of the Christian faith. I've enjoyed two periods here in the university as a student. Recently, as a fellow, I've got to know three of these academics very well. These men all hold professorial chairs in their own disciplines. They've taught, lectured, written, debated and broadcast in defence of the Christian faith. These men, Professor John Lennox, Professor Keith Ward and Professor Alistair McGrath, are to be my guests in a series of discussions all based around themes of Christian apologetics. <laughs>